push the record button. Say there I go. We're recording it. It's recording right now. Okay. So I'm recording at the same time right now. And we missed about 10 minutes of pure funny and genius thing. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure we can reconstruct that. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this, is, this is called spontaneity. This just doesn't get reconstructed. We're not on Top Chef now. Go and deconstruct and reconstruct. This is the real McCoy. I've still got this spinning icon for Olivier, but that's fantastic. Although I'm looking at this picture of him like he's a male model or something. For like, I am. By the way, I'm, I am. You know, in during nightlife, I'm a male model. You okay. Know, so, yeah. Okay, g guy. So this is what I've said to you. If if we don't interrupt Tim, he will still go on talking. So and this is not the point here. You know, you are the guest. Okay, so you have to defend yourself. Please, I know that you're very polite. You're a professor. But just, just, just don't. Every time that team talks, you just say "shut up." It's my turn. It's my show. Basically, this is what I expect from you. Anyway, so uh, I would like to to kick this thing off because obviously, all the time it's teams that usually because he has his diva complex that always try to do some some intro. So I would like to do this intro myself and try to introduce you, guy. So, and in order to introduce you, uh, I would like just to read a small paragraph that is coming from your website from one of the uh, from one of the blog posts a recent blog post that that describes you and it says uh, Dr. Guy McPherson is professor emeritus of natural resources and ecology and evolutionary biology of the University of Arizona okay right now only to read that I'm already lost I have no clue what I've just read okay but uh, Anyway, I, I continue. And he has published a few books that address climate collapse. Okay, so far so good. Are we, are we aligned? Okay. He believes, and this is the very, very, very edgy part, I guess. But this is, okay, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying that. He believes that human, civil, human civilization is on fast track to complete annihilation as we will be unable to avert planetary warming enough to prevent cataclysmic consequences. Okay, I fucked up the last part. Yeah, you but did. Uh, and yeah. annihilation. You fucked up and annihilation uh, as well. But anyway, go on. I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of me. I've managed to read two sentences in English. You should applaud me right now. <laughs> anyway. No, no. No? no. But any, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, Guy, you believe that we are fucked, basically. This is uh, from, from my uh, small minds. By the way, we are very, uh, you are Professor Emeritus. We are uh, idiots, both of us, Tim and I. So, but but to, 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 to summarize what I understood is you believe that we, as a, a human species, we are we are fucked by 2030 2040 something like that because of global global uh, climate change or global warming is it is it if I, if i summarize this correctly yeah yes yes we are headed for human extinction in the quite near term far sooner than most people believe it could be much sooner than that as i indicate in a couple of recent videos mm. um called the edge of extinction which is a new component of nature bats last right so you know it could be as little as a couple of years wow you, you, you know what it's it's uh, just before you go because I, obviously i would like to know you know why you, you believe that we would like to know uh but before before going there I, I just feel like i'm just doing a coming out right now you know by introducing by having you on on, on this podcast because when I go to society and have these fancy dinners and I, have, I am with my friends and so forth, and we discuss about anything and everything, about the future, about, you know, how future plan and everything, I still have you in the corner of my mind. And I say, shit, you know, there's this near-term human extension there. And I cannot tell them. I cannot tell them. You know, it's something that it's there. If I just mention your name and to say, oh, by the way, there's this guy, Guy McPherson, this professor that believes that we are fucked by 2030 or sooner than that, as you mentioned. I think that the, I would just kill the dinner and the spirit of joy that we're having with my friends. So 
this is something that I wanted to say. So right now I'm just doing this coming out to say, okay, look, I'm exposing to this my friends community and to the world right now. And and I feel and I feel scared by the way. Anyway, so can, can you just mention, guy, that you, you say that it can be sooner than that? So you say from two years, couple of years, yeah, that we just be extinct, going extinct. What's what's? Can you explain us more? Sure. Um, you know, you know, birth is lethal. Nobody gets out alive, and we've known that, and we've accepted that probably since we were ten years old or so, mm. and. And we know that all species go extinct. You know, there, there have been hundreds of thousands of species that preceded us that have all gone extinct. Mm. And so there's no reason to expect that our species won't go extinct. Also, I mean, we're, we're special indeed. We have the big brains. But all species go extinct <clears throat> because of loss of habitat. Mm. So... So let me give you an example. Um, there's a 50 gigaton burp of methane that, according to Natalia Shikova, um, a Russian researcher who studies methane in the Arctic Ocean, uh, she indicates that that 50 gigaton burp of methane could be released from the Arctic Ocean at any time. Mm. In, in fact, she says it's highly possible at any time. So that's a direct quote. So if that happens, there will be at least a 1.3 degree centigrade temperature rise. That's global average. Well, we're currently at 0.85 degrees centigrade above baseline or the beginning of the Industrial Revolution or commonly accepted at 1750. Okay. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. That, that was actually my question. We just answered it. So what, what is this baseline? What is this baseline that, you, that you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, we use as the baseline the, the the beginning of the industrial revolution, 1750, when when humans really started to have a measurable impact on the environment at a global scale mm. uh, by burning fossil fuels. So most we most people pin that right at 1750. Although there was so little change in the burning of fossil fuels um, between then and 1850 that some people say 1850, but. We'll be conservative and say 1750, and there's not much difference anyway. So 0.85 degrees C temperature rise between 1750 and now. And we haven't had humans on this planet at more than 3.22 degrees centigrade above baseline. So that sounds like it's a long way off. We're at 0.85 3.22, that seems like a long way from now, especially since in the last couple of hundred years we've only warmed such a small amount, 0.85 degrees. Mm. But that, that 50 gigaton burp of methane that's, that's in the Arctic Ocean that Natalia Shikova indicates could be released at any time into the atmosphere, that conservatively adds 1.3 C. Oh, mm. so 1.3 plus 0.85, that takes us to 2.15. Well, scientists, climate scientists have warned for many years that anything above 2 degrees centigrade takes out civilization. And that makes sense because the interior of continents, continental interiors warm up at least twice as fast, twice as fast or more than the global average. So we get up to 2.15 C for the global average. And that means 4.3 C for the interior. Well, it's difficult for me to imagine a situation that we could grow grains at scale at more than 4 C above baseline, more than 4 C above the point at which we began the whole process of growing grains, mm. you know, a few thousand years ago. Mm. So that's a mark. That's an indicator of civilization is the ability to grow grains at scale and distribute them. And, and I mean, that's, a, after all, how we get through the hard times. We store grains, which are easily stored. We just have to keep them dry. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't even have to worry much about the temperature. We just have to keep the grains dry, and then we can get through the hard times, right? We can get through the periods in which the crop fails. And it's pretty easy to store them. So... The inability to grow grains at scale means that civilization is done, game over. And when civilization ends, that means we stop putting all these reflective particles into the atmosphere. In particular, sulfates that we 
um, liberate from coal by burning the coal. So, so the the process of industry, the processes of industry, burning those fossil fuels, actually, in the long term, warms the planet, but in the shorter term, cools the planet because of what's called global dimming. So we release those particulates into the atmosphere, and they serve as something of an umbrella that keep the temperature of the planet warmer than it otherwise would be. And in fact, according to a paper by James Hansen and colleagues in 2000, published in 2011, that global dimming accounts for 1.2 plus or minus 0.2 C of cooling. It would, it would otherwise be 1.2 plus or minus 0.2 C warmer than it is right now if we weren't burning all those fossil fuels and kicking those reflective particles up into the atmosphere. Well, two subsequent papers have demonstrated that that 2011 paper was quite conservative. And so I think it's it's safe to say that 1.4 C, tack on the 0.2, the 1.2 plus or minus 0.2, let's make it 1.4 C above baseline, uh, above where we're at right now if we terminate civilization. So, so if the methane burst that is highly possible at any time actually emerges from the Arctic Ocean, that takes us to 2.15 C, tack on the 1.4 C associated with uh, no longer allowing for global dimming. And now we're at um, 2.15 plus 1.4. That's 3.55. We haven't had humans on a planet above 3.22. That takes us to 3.55. Oop, that's a third of a degree centigrade above which we've had humans on this planet before. And those changes occur in a matter of two years. One year in the northern hemisphere after methane is released from the Arctic Ocean before the heating occurs. Two years for that, I, I mean, one full year after that before the methane is fully circulated around the globe and warms the planet to 3.55 C. So it could be a very short period of time. You know, it could be, and it could go the other way as well. It could be that we have industrial civilization collapse or even the United States empire collapse. And that accounts for about a third of the particulates. And the latest paper, published in 2013, the latest paper on global dimming, indicates that even as little as 35% reduction in emissions causes a 1C temperature rise. So, boom, just like that, American Empire Falls or Europe or, or China, those are the big three economic drivers. Any of those three stop kicking particulates up into the atmosphere. And we're, we're already at a point beyond which humans have persisted on this planet. So, and, and rapidly, you know, those, those changes occur, we're, we're talking in, in less than two years for that rapid rise to occur. That's what could happen. I'm not saying that will happen, although at least a dozen pundits are predicting collapse of, of U.S. empire this year. And, and that, that methane release could come as a result of the um, increasingly ice-free Arctic. So if you've been following that for a while, you know that that over the last few years, the Arctic has been losing a lot of its ice and is expected to be ice-free at least in September pretty much any year now. You know, it, it could be this year. It's more likely that it'll be next year or the year after that. But I'm suggesting that that timing is not what we should be focusing on. That in, instead we should be focusing on the notion that that we have triggered runaway greenhouse. That none of us are going to get out of this alive. And so perhaps we should start living with some respect and decency for the people and and the non-people around us in light of this information that our lives are in fact short. Mm. So are you, you know, say, sorry? I was no, say, are, you, are you saying that me giving up alcohol for January is a complete waste of time? Then can I tell that to my wife officially? <laughs> <laughs> because no, if we're um, going don't, down don't, in two years, fuck it. I know my living's gonna last at least two years, but I drank a lot over Christmas. I said I wouldn't drink for a month. So. 
I, I think every action we can take that might be beneficial to non-human species is an entirely appropriate action. And, and here I, I'm thinking about um, the organization Deep Green Resistance or the organization Idle No More, or the work of Derek Jensen and, and Lee Eric Keith. Um, these are people on the front line of of dismantling industrial civilization not because it'll save our species or allow our species to persist any longer, but because we have a moral obligation to the rest of the living planet as well. Mm. You know, at, at some point, Guy, you, you just, uh, you, when you were doing this long expose and explain us that, uh, you know, basically putting all the data all together and this uh, one point something, at some point, you paused during your, your expose and tried to add the numbers, you know, and I was just scared that you would ask us just to do the math for us, you know, where I was I, so how much was one plus one, because I had no idea right now. But well, I, I'd written it down, that because you're a shit host, I've written all this crap down. Well, I say crap, I don't mean crap, but it's crap, but you know what I mean, I've been writing it down. But I, I, I thought I was like really in, in, this, in this classroom and I was following the professor, so it, it was done. And, and Really, you know, and I've told you that via email, guys, is, is for me is, you know, that's your, your perspective. Yeah, this is you. We are going to extinctions. And you're, and you're right, by the way, this, this, we had how many uh, extinctions event? Five extinctions event, I believe, globally and global scales. Yeah, we're, we're, in, we're in the midst of the sixth great extinction event yeah. on the planet, the sixth that we know about. And this one is proceeding more rapidly than any other. In addition, there have been 16... Um, relatively minor, but still big enough to to be documented in the fossil record. Mm -hmm. uh, an additional 16 extinction events uh, within the fossil record. So, you know, it's not as if this is the first time, although this is the first time that, that a single species, ours, is responsible for triggering this event and taking so many other species down with us. And, and it's proceeding more rapidly than any other previous extinction event as well. So, so what, what I like really is is your reaction after that, so because you you come with this gloom, you know, and doom, you know, information, and you say, you know what, you know, we should be now, we should live differently. Well, not that you said differently, but uh, how do you say that with with love or with meaning or doing the sensitive thing, you know, these kind of things. You 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 always use these words, and to me, to be honest, I was much more interesting by this, you know, and I've told you with in in my email, but. How do we live without? Because I remember one thing, I've watched one of your videos and you said, I remember clearly you said, okay, maybe you don't believe me. Maybe the data that I present to you are wrong, right? But in any case, we die. In any case, you know, forget me, I may be wrong, but I, we die. So what do we do? How do we live? How should we live? And that's, this is what really interests me here. And you always, I believe in your video messages, you says, only love remains, or love remains, or something like that. You know, can you can you mm -hmm. go on with that? Can you maybe explain that a little bit further? Sure. And before the, I go there, I want to point out the uh, what I would consider the other end of the spectrum. Mm. Um, in late no late November of last year, Paul Beckwith, who's an expert on uh, uh, release of methane from the Arctic Ocean, he's at the University of Ottawa in Canada, and he said we're we're at the beginning of an of a period of abrupt climate change, and as a result, we're we're likely to experience five or six degrees C global average temperature rise within a decade or two. And he actually indicated that we might go as high as sixteen degrees C, although that would be sixteen C higher over a, the last glacial period, which is five C lower than where we're at now. So. So bottom line, he he is projecting a 5 to 11 C temperature rise within a decade or two. So let's take the most conservative outlook on that. What that means is uh, a 5 C temperature rise in 20 years from November of last year. And, and I see no way for human habitat to persist mm. uh, that long either. So, so I would consider that to be the 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 longer version of the story that it could be as little as a couple of years it could be as long as 20 years but but i think it it gets right back to your question and right back to the same point regardless that in the end our lives are brief and i don't care if you live to be a hundred i'm 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 guessing when you're there in your deathbed based on everything i've read and everything i've observed 
that a hundred year old person on their deathbed is thinking that didn't last very long. Well, that was that was a pretty short ride. I, I can only remember in, in my head a few things, a few a few memories um, in my final days. And and I bet if if we were to if any of the three of us were to actually sit and meditate and write down all the all the really amazing things, all the really momentous events in our lives, we'd come up with a handful or maybe fifty. Right? I mean, so so we have these memories, these and they aren't very many. I bet I bet and, Tim has one hundred. Tim, how many do I have memories? <laughs> uh, two. There was the first podcast I ever did with you. <laughs> and then 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 it was the last po- podcast I'm ever doing with you. <laughs> because I'm so, so fucking so, depressed. <laughs> For fuck's sake, men now. So you got a, a bad memory and then a badder memory. That's yeah, what you're that, that's right. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's back to the alcohol thing, isn't it? But I'm going to have to start drinking after this. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, guy. Now we'll start to drink now. Can I just ask so, you? So, 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 so Olivier, that. my carry on, carry my on. point is Olivier and Tim that that we really don't have long, and and our memories are so flawed and so you know deceptive and and inadequate anyway that. Even if we live to what we would consider a very long time, we're going to take take with us into the abyss a relatively few memories, and and so my point uh, after after all this rambling and saying we're all going to die, my point is, let's live with decency, let's be kind to each other, let's act compassionately, let's respect each other, and not just humans, but respect non-humans as well, and let's try to create moments. Hopefully, moments of joy, moments of passion. Let's pursue our own purpose, whatever that is, with passion. And instead of grubbing for the next dollar, instead of uh, elbowing grandmother out of the way so we can get the best deal on the cheap plastic crap on Black Friday, instead of doing all that, Let's live as we are capable of living, and we are all capable of decency, of integrity, of of respect for each other. So, so let's do that. That's all. I mean, that's really the whole story. And people have been suggesting we do that for thousands of years. Um, I, I guess the notion that we that we might reach the end of our days in the not too distant future maybe add some fuel to the fire. And so that's what I'm trying to do in promoting this message, is sort of adding to the fuel to the fire of pursuing a life of passion and compassion. Do, do you not think... Um, first of all, I'm disappointed you haven't brought plankton up, because I know the wiping out of plankton is great, because I was just... Because I was, I was going to say, well, can't we just slaughter all the whales? Because those fat fuckers have been eating the plankton for for decades and done nothing <laughs> about it. The Japanese have tried to do it and they've just got they've got pillaged for it. So I'm a bit disappointed in that. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Uh, but second of all, don't you think it's more likely to do the opposite? You know, people say, well, you know, what would you do if it was your last day on Earth? And, and people say, well, I'd do this and I'd do this. Well, first of all, I'd probably do what Homer Simpson did. The symptoms which would sit down on the curb outside and cry my eyes out, you know, or, or I'd just go berserk, you know. So my favourite comedian of all time, who's now dead, Greg Giraldo, when he was asked about after the crash, um, you know, uh, did he lose much money in the crash? And he said, no, I didn't lose a thing. He said, uh, but then again, I'd not got a thing. He said, it seemed like it was a good time to be a fuck up and spend all my money on tequila and hookers. So I think most people <laughs> will be spending the money on tequila and hookers, you know, or, or acting... In an, you know, a, a, a more irresponsible way, if they thought this was generally going to happen, it's just like a fuck it attitude. We're all going to die anyway. I've never liked that bastard <laughs> down the road. I'm going to take him out because there's no consequences. Do you think that's just, you know? And I hope that's not possible. But do you think that is possible? Well, so uh, of of course, of course, I, I expect that any any number of human reactions will be on display as people realize where we're going. And in fact, you bring up a good point. Do you, do you think the the big bankers don't know? You know, the, these are people, I, I think the bajillionaires, the, the people who have uh, created enormous amount of monetary wealth for themselves have done so because they have access to information. And I don't see them turning their behavior around. You know, they're they're still 
trying to generate. I think they know what I know, and they're still trying to create um, hedonistic lives for themselves. On the other hand, when I speak to American audiences, and those are the audiences with which I'm most familiar, obviously, so this might not apply there. People ask me, don't you think your message is going to promote hedonism? And I say, really? In the United States? How the hell would I know the difference? Yeah. You know, we do everything we want anyway. Essentially, every college student I ever taught in, in the final five years I was in active service at the university, every college student that came along had made the obligatory trip to England, to, to Europe, when they were in high school to see another culture. And I pointed out to them that that's the same culture. If you want to see another culture, why don't you drive 20 miles outside of Tucson and go to the nearest in Indian reservation? And I only, have, I only have two significant word issues with the term Indian reservation, and the issues are Indian and reservation. Other than that, i got no problem with the whole idea. But if you want to see another culture, you just need to go a very short distance and experience people who are living very differently than we're living in the Western world. You don't have to go to Europe and throw your coin in, in, the, in the fountain to, to see another side of American empire. Mm. If you want to see something different, go next door. Don't go 3,000 you know, 3, miles or 6,000 miles across a pond. That seems a little ridiculous. So do I think people will live hedonistically? Yes, I think they will, and I think a whole bunch of people already are. Do I think some people might not pursue that route? Yeah, I, I see a lot of people who are not pursuing that out route already. In fact, most of the people I talk to who subsequently talk to me, and I'll admit that's probably a, a really slim majority of the total, tell me that they cry, that they go home and they cry for a week or a month. And then they try to remember what they wanted to do, what their dream was, what the, what the purpose they assigned to themselves in life when they were 12 or 14 or 30 years old, and they start doing that. Mm. It, hopefully their dream is not to watch the next Olympics, because that, that's not going to happen, <laughs> uh, is it? <laughs> by, by, the, by, by, by the way, Guy, I, I do live in the US, and, and, I've de uh, and I think, generally speaking, I get what you're saying, but I also think the cultures are very, very different, but not, not as different as going to somewhere like the Middle East or Southeast Asia or somewhere like that. So I, I get you meaning. It sounded like Olivier wanted to come in and say something because he only spoke for 10 minutes nonstop at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> You're jealous now because I have more talk time from you now. Yeah, yeah I, I am. But I think... I think uh, you know this. What you're saying, like this, this meaning, this life of meaning. I think nobody that I know deny climate change, right? Nobody that I know. Okay. Seriously? Seriously? Well, no, I'm not living. I'm not living in the US. I'm not living in the US, man. I'm not living in Florida like you. So you know, uh, most of the, most uh, of my on. friends are educated. You know? hang, so, hang on, hang on, hang on. So you live. So you're Frenchman living in Dubai. Okay. So so I mean, I've no idea about. Dubai, I, I really don't. But I mean, to, to me, the denial of, of global warming, I, I, that was one of the issues that I wanted to talk about because there's so many people. I've, I see it almost daily of people saying, you know, and it seems to me like a right versus left thing, or they see it as a right versus left thing, you know, very uh. the, the far right deny global warming. And, you know, the, it's just, a, you know, and they point to other episodes that have happened or whatever. You know, I mean, Al Gore for his, his TED. Ted speech got pilloried by the right as it being inaccurate and so on and mm. so forth and and do you and that's and so, sorry Olivier to to let my ego creep back in again but it it, it was just one <laughs> fucking sit still I'll tell you it's just like burst forth uh, because I, I I I'm just interested if I may in asking um, asking the, the 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 question from Guy about. Do you see the same, the political divide? Almost it's like the far right refuse to accept this and maybe it's a self-serving, maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know, whatever. But do you, do, do, have you noticed that? It may be a really stupid question, you must say you have cause, or you may say, no, I haven't, you know. Yes, of course. There's In this country, there's the... There's the far right, that's Obama and the Democrats, and the extreme batshit crazy far right. <laughs> and the extreme batshit crazy far right is running the show at this point. What, I mean, what, what was the first thing they did? 
the first thing they did in Congress yesterday, now that we have a Republican Congress, is is send out the attack on women and senior citizens. So they're they're trying to roll back reproductive rights and roll back Social Security benefits. <laughs> I'm like, of course they are, because that's what they do. But you know, if Ronald Reagan, Barack Obama's political hero heralded throughout Obama's first campaign. If Ronald Reagan were running today, he couldn't win uh, an election for a local school board because he'd be viewed as as too liberal. Oh. And, okay. and so that's where we are. We're, we're at this unbelievably fascistic, far-right, insane point in history. And, and as nearly as I can tell, the Democrats and the Republicans rep- represent the twin cheeks of the corporate ass. They're, they're both representing the, the corporations that run the show. Mm. You sound like a hippie, my friend, guy, really. <laughs> it, it means hippie, hippie, by the way. Hippie, not, hippie. Not hippie. 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 By the way, what, 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 what did batshit do to ever get this bad name? <laughs> what, what the fuck is it with bat you know it's like why is batshit crazier any crazier than any other sort of bird that uses echo phone or, or whatever it's called um, to navigate I don't understand that I feel bad for the bats I'm going to defend the bats you said about being passionate early on about to other things no, you're absolutely species. right I'm defending the bat I'm, from now on I'm a bat and I'm going fuck you McPherson my shit ain't crazy yours is you're a human being you're the crazy motherfucker you're right you're right you're absolutely right I have insulted bat shit Thank yet you. again Dra- try not Dracula's to coming to do get you now <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you never did a podcast like this guy for, for so, but uh, that's, that's, <laughs> anyway, uh, what I was saying, you just interrupt me uh, oh, yeah. before, Tim, uh, yeah. about, I was, I was saying minute. that, okay, so let me try again. I, I, I was saying that all, everybody who I know who are educated at least, they, they don't deny climate change, but, but it's about this, you, you, the difference uh, for you guys, you, you come with something which is new, which is abrupt climate change, which is basically the timing. The timing is different right now. Because when I was, you know, uh, I'm looking at the uh, IPCC reports and they say, well, you know what, we need to, we need to be careful and to cut by 70% our fuel emission by 2050. And we need to reduce totally the fuel emission by it. Uh, wait, tw- 2100. wait, 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 I have to interrupt. Good. Shit. My little task Good. cam said my battery's low. Oh, fuck. So I need to replace my batteries. I'll be right back. No worries. Hang on. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh... No, I'm going for a piss. You can talk to yourself. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have such limited technological capabilities that it's <laughs> okay. all I can do to put the batteries in. That's okay. Tim had a bathroom break. How was your bathroom okay. break? How was your bathroom break, Tim? Relieving. Cool. Actually, I hit the bloody wall. <laughs> I won't explain why. I'll just leave it at that. But my, but my wife's due home from work shortly. She'll be. Uh... Have you pissed on the wall again? So I thought, well, why the fuck would you put a wall right next to a toilet? You know, it's just like, it's, how stupid is that? It's like, yeah, of course I have. Okay. I'm not, I don't know what to say anymore. No, I know you don't. You're being, very, you're being very serious in this podcast. I, know, honestly, I think you've got a bit of, uh, I think there's a bit of um, starstruckness in you or what. <laughs> Okay, we're we're back and we're recording again. My apologies. No That's problem. okay. 
That's okay. I don't know what I, what I was saying, but I don't think that it's important enough. No, it isn't. It wasn't. You're right. No, no, it wasn't important. But I'm, I'm, I think I'm more, okay, I, 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 I think I was going to the IPCC report and all this stuff and trying to say that, you know, you believe in abrupt climate change, but okay, let's cut that because it's not that interesting. But I think, you know, Tim, you mentioned one behavior from humans, you know, that uh, all the humans will, will go to this very hedonistic, I will do whatever I want and this like this. But I think I have more hope, actually, you know, and, uh, you know, during hard time, and I'm just, I just, I'm just looking at what happened in France right now. You had this terrorist attack in France and people gathered around, you know, and we, we have this kind of compassion and love and people they are very, very dignified by all this, you know, and, and you can see the human spirit behind that, you know. And uh, this is something that gives me hope, actually. So I'm, I'm, you know, when you say, Tim, that people will just go berserk and, you know, do whatever I want, I hope that, you know, there's this humanity society in us that will be, and humor as well, that will, that will save us. What do we, you think? We're not wired up like that, though. I, I just want to say that. We're just, we, human beings are not wired up like that. Compassion is something that we learn. Well, no, mm -hmm. that's not true. That's not true. We have ah. compassion. But we're wired up to survive. We're wired up for pleasure. We're not wired up to think about, will there still be buffalo on the planet in 100 years' time? That takes a lot of conscious effort, a certain amount of intelligence, a certain amount of forethought. and think, You know, most 99.99% of people, if they were being truly honest, don't give a shit what happens to the world if humanity, if them and their future generations are wiped out. They really don't care. And it's, you can talk about it being an obligation and, and on a conscious level and on an intellectual level, I agree. Absolutely, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a, an obligation we have toward the planet. But I think when the reality strikes, you, you know, if we knew that humanity was dying out in five years' time, it would just be blind panic. It would be just complete civil disobedience and, and turmoil and uh, almost, I don't want to get too biblical, but almost like Armageddon. I mean, that's, and, and I hope I'm wrong, and I hope you're right, Guy, and I hope you're right, Olivier, with having more faith in humanity. But my experience is you only have to see, you only have to see when you, know, you have a power cut in a major city and suddenly you've got looting going on and all that kind of thing. And, yeah. you know, so uh, what makes you think, Guy, what makes you think that people could act differently to you? Know, you so let me let me put this in, in a sort of let me just frame this. So when you talk about climate change, you're looking at like, patterns, patterns of behavior of the climate patterns that well, we've never, you know, we've never been above, you know, 3.22 percent before uh, 3.22 um, degrees, I beg your pardon, above uh, above where we are. Uh, from, from the baseline, from normal, and, and humanity survived, and we're talking now it could go to 3.55. So we're, we're looking at patterns, and that's the only thing you've got to go on, because that's the only way we can sort of like, you know, look at history. So pattern of behaviour is when people are in crisis, in, in genuine crisis, uh, where there's no hope, and this is the thing, the key word to this is hope. If there's hope, it's different. People do band together. You can talk about the Dunkirk spirit in, in London in the, in, the, in the Second World War. You can talk about all sorts of stories of people banding together when there's hope. But when hope is removed, people act very, very strangely. What, what makes you think that that may be flipped? What's the evidence for that as a scientist? Um, I think... I think you're assuming that this current culture, this current society, is not acting insanely. Uh, I think you're assuming that this is not the most violent society in the history of the world, and in fact it is. Every time you turn on a light, a brown person has to die for it. Every time you turn on the taps and water comes out, you're destroying your land base. This is the very definition of insanity. We've, we've created a culture that mines the living planet and destroys other humans, which we readily identify as other, so that we can have our conveniences. And this is, this is unbelievably violent, this, this culture in which we're embedded. And we, we, we turn towards 
some proposed future and claim that it will be worse. And it's difficult for me to imagine how worse it could be. Will the, will the violence be in our neighborhood instead of exported to the Middle East and Northern Africa? Almost certainly. Will we be forced to face the violence instead of having it obscured from us, which is what we prefer? Almost certainly. So now, now we're so hyper-hygienic about the people we kill that we don't even allow the media to show the coffins when they are brought back to this country from our conquests, what we call wars, but which are actually conquests. So we don't even look it in the eye. We don't even acknowledge that we're killing people, that we're driving species to extinction. We just go blithely along as if this is the way it's supposed to be because we benefit from this. But this is horrible already. Will it get worse in our neighborhood? I have no doubt. Will it get worse at the local scale? It's difficult for me to imagine how. Well, uh, okay, so there's a quote by Wayne Dyer I'm not a massive fan of, I must, I must admit, but there's a quote by him that you don't have to be sick to get better. Um, and you don't have to be insane to get insaner. You know, so I, I think in, in that respect, you know, you, uh, Olivier alluded to the, the troubles in France that have happened over the last couple of days. And, and uh, I, I've, I've just, I, w- I was about to tweet because obviously um, people listening to this afterwards, it will be not particularly newsworthy, but they've actually found the guys that did it and they've, they've killed them just before we came on on air. And I was thinking, they're going to feel fucking stupid now because when there's not 78 or how many versions it is waiting for them. And I was going to tweet that and I thought, no, there'll be a fatwa out on me before I know it. But actually, I didn't have time before we came on. There, so <laughs> I was walking the dogs, I was freezing my tits off because global warming didn't work at the time. But there you go. <laughs> Um, but I think thing you know to say it can't get worse. I think you know, I mean, take the, the problems we've got at the moment in, in the Middle East. And, and and guy, you know, to fundamental level, I agree w- with what you say. You know, I've lost more clients than I can count because of my my uh, liberal tendencies. You know, and, and my standing up for min- minorities and and the way we do things, etc. Um, but I think. To suggest that you know, so so for instance, I, I could imagine. Um, okay, let me just back up a second, and I'm going to let you come in. I, I do apologise because Olivia is going to give me grief for this, but yeah, you know, I I think we're on the verge, almost like of a holy war. You know, who would have thought, like 20, 30 years ago, when the problems were happening, and Olivia probably won't remember this, and I'm not being patronising, but I I grew up, in, you know, I was born in '62, so I remember the Cold War remember that vividly, you know, I remember watching the Berlin Wall go. Who would have thought at that time that the most likelihood of a, a world war was a ho- another holy war? Yet now, when you see this week that ISIS have announced they've got a $3 billion budget to spend, $3 billion, you know, for effectively a terrorist organisation, what, what makes you think that they, that they wouldn't step in? You, I could imagine all sorts of things you know, like in terms of, and not not just, and I'm not just putting this on, on the Muslims at all. I'm saying, you know, from all sides, that's just an extremist viewpoint. And and I, I've got to throw in now the obligatory, my brother-in-law's a Muslim. It's like saying, I've got a friend who's black, I've got a friend who's gay, so I can't be homophobic. Yeah, you know, but do you know what I mean? So I, I just, I'd, I'd love to believe it. I really want to. It's like I want to believe in God. I want to, you know, I'm an agnostic. But I just don't see the rationale. I see the rationale behind everything you said before, but but not behind that. Well, it could be that human beings get worse than they are. It could be that we, um, in instead of uh, purposely, willingly, willfully killing people on another continent so that we can have an extra pair of shoes. It could be that we'll kill our neighbors, too, for their shoes. Um, very, very few things about human behavior surprise me anymore. Um, so, but, so, so we could get worse. We could always get worse. Every time I think it couldn't possibly get worse, we have another national-level election. And then I'm reminded that, sure enough, it can get worse. And it always does. 
So it could be that human behavior goes in what I would consider the wrong direction from a really horrible starting point. But I still think people deserve to know what I know, hmm. that, that people have a right to know what I know about climate change. And they certainly aren't getting it from the corporate media or the corporate governments that run the world. So why not? Why not tell people and let them deal with the evidence, with the facts, the way that they will? Mm -hmm. Because currently, most people in this country are, are acting in almost complete ignorance. And that's willful, too. Mm -hmm. You know, if people actually knew yeah. that flipping on the light killed somebody, if, if people actually knew that turning on the tap meant destroying the land base, they might act differently. Or they might not. So, but I think people deserve to know that too. So is, is it a question of indication that we did? Yeah, show that. <laughs> show your glass of water. But but uh, I'm, I'm sipping it now. <laughs> yeah, and I will sip my I, beer actually, at the same time. I, I didn't cut out the tap because it's raining here in Florida in December, which is very unusual. Guy, I, if you could explain this, so I went and caught it <laughs> coming out of the sky. So I'm drinking neat acid now. That's why I'm talking bollocks. I'm on acid. Carry on. Are you on acid? No, you're not. Acid rain. Acid, <laughs> acid rain. Acid rain. Okay, I forgot what I was to say. I'm already drunk with one beer, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that beer kills 17 people. I hope you enjoy it. Better, better be, this fucking podcast better be the best podcast ever because you're, you're a homicidal maniac. You know, you know, Stalin would be appalled if you can't drink Because of my beers. beer. Yeah. <laughs> He only killed Fuck 20 man. million. He'd probably done more than that with your beard. Drinking. You know, I'm, I'm, I was thinking what you said, Tim, but, but I still have hope, you know. Like, and, 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 and I would say I'm an, an optimistic idiot again, but I live in this Muslim country in Dubai, okay? And maybe this is not very representative, but, you know, everyone gets along. Everyone gets along. Fine, right? And there's no this, this sense of, of uh, I'm Muslim or I'm Christian or I'm agnostic. I'm agnostic like just like you, Tim, and we all get along fine. And I remember also reading a book which was called, I uh, just was pulled out from Amazon. It's, it's called The Disaster Diaries, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Apocalypse. And this book by Sam Sheridan is about this guy who tries to prepare himself from becoming apocalypse, right? And he's, he's just, he's a, pre, he's a prepper, he's a prepper, right? And so I need, I need to know how to kill an animal, I need how to, you know, to do all this kind of stuff just to, to prepare myself when the apocalypse would come. However, he just realized that you cannot be prepared, really. You cannot be prepared. You cannot, everything, you know, there's so many things, so many you know, things that can happen that you cannot be 100% prepared. And he, he finished the books with hope, actually, from he, he basically spent five years training himself and he finished the books by saying, well, look, I have hope with humanity. And one of the examples that is mentioned is when there was this Katrina hurricane in New Orleans where, uh, you know, the, the, it was horrible over there in New Orleans. It was horrible. People were lacking some, some support, medicals and all this stuff. And Basically, everyone from the outside of New Orleans were hearing these rumors about exactly what you described, Tim, about uh, rapes and you know, murders and all this kind of shit happening. It was chaos. So what happened is before sending the, the helps, you know, the support, basically the army was preparing themselves you know, because they were expecting to find like pure chaos, you know, pure chaos and things. And actually, when they're walking in New Orleans, what they, they describe, what they found out is people helping each other. People helping each other. There was, there was people helping the poor, the, 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 you know, the, the sick and everyone. So there was a sense of community and help during this catastrophe. And this example, I don't know, that gives me hope about this humanity. I don't know. I may be a, a dreamer here. Well, I, I just want to add something. There was two, yeah. there was two murders in the New Orleans Superdome alone, uh, which was used as a, for, for housing people. There were actually loads of examples of people taking advantage of that. But uh, I'm not saying there weren't examples of people. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing a little bit devil's advocate here now because yeah. you know, I definitely hope you're right. And I think, I think when 
the, the shit hits the fan like it did in New Orleans, you almost like have no choice. I think it's when they know it's coming, when it's maybe a year, two, three years down the road, say if we get this this methane burp or whatever. And um, it's interesting because I only just recently watched the Neil deGrasse Tyson Cosmos series and he talks about that in the last programme and it was a little bit, um, not necessarily discouraging, but you know, it was interesting because he, he pretty much what, what, what you said, Guy, is he, he, he was talking about. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, it's, it's not black and white like that, uh, yeah. Olivier. It wasn't just people helping each other at all. The world looting's, no, sure. world looting's going on. There were plenty of examples of people stealing other people's property. And, and like I say, within the Superdome itself, there was a couple of murders, or at least one murder. I think there was two, actually. Um, so, um, so, of course, yeah. You know. Of course, it's of course it's not black and white, team. Of course, but you know, and uh, interesting thing, uh, guy. You know, what do you do actually yourself? Because you, when you say you have some lectures, and at the end of the lectures, you 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 hand the message actually with this, you know, with, with what we should we do and things like that. So, and you say live this life of meaning or you know compassion. You know, so what what are the advices or guidance that you provide to the audience? Well, I want to go back to something you were yeah. saying just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Um, that you brought up preppers, and there's a particularly timely article, the Economic Collapse blog, uh, yesterday, um, and and it's all about how the government is making it increasingly difficult to prepare for any impending disaster. So the Obama administration, for example, has outlawed the production and sale of 80 percent of the wood stoves currently in use. So it becomes increasingly difficult to burn wood to heat yourself. Uh, already in thousands of municipalities, it's illegal to grow food in your front yard. It's, Ill it's illegal to harvest rainwater in, in many places in the western United States, including where I live. It's illegal to live off the grid in Florida, the whole state. So with the exception of not being able to secure our food, our water, and our energy, or the ability to heat ourselves, we've got all kinds of freedom going on in this country. What, what mm. do you mean? You say it's illegal to live off the, the, the grid in Florida. What do, what, do you, what do you mean by that, guy? The state of Florida outlawed living off the grid. You can no longer have an off-grid photovoltaic solar array, for example. It has to be connected to the grid. Oh, the electrical grid. Sorry, I'm with you. Okay, sorry, I, right. I didn't because uh, I, I live in Florida, so. I was a, um, okay, wow! I didn't know that. I mean, I know all. Right. So that was sorry. I was just saying, I know Orlando's banned giving food to homeless people in parks. That's now, <laughs> that's now illegal. Which I thought, ah, oh, where'd you go, Orlando? I'm proud of my, <laughs> my home city. You fucking wankers, you know. But uh, and I know LA right, bans living in cars. Sorry, go on, guy. I beg your pardon. And there's hundreds, hundreds of places that have done that. That that have banned feeding the homeless. Or, or otherwise, showing compassion for other human beings. Holy That's ridiculous. Shit. That's ridiculous. I, That's I'm ridiculous. just reading Walden by um, Henry David Thoreau, and uh, uh -huh. I, I, have you ever, have you read it, guy? Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, it seems to me that's the way forward. <laughs> that guy was. Uh, was like generations ahead of his time. I'm just blown away. If you've not read it, Olivier, I don't know if you have. I no, I don't. Can you, can, can you explain that? Can you give Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Thoreau, but basically, even though the, the, the place he went to live was owned, owned by Emerson, uh, he basically went off grid for, you know, uh, I think it was two years, wasn't it? I, I, I think it was two years. And, and um, but basically he breaks down the fact that, you know, cl the purpose of clothing is to keep warm is to protect ourselves it's not to look smart it's not to do this or whatever mm. that you know you basically if we have a hole then we patch it and whatever and and and, and he, he basically lashes out against borrowing to have things that we can't afford to pay for he, he built his own home in the woods and, and so on and so forth and i mean it's just very i mean the the, the expression uh um, men leading lives of quiet desperation, ordinary men leading lives of quiet desperation, uh, was, was coined, was something that he wrote in the book, which I see that as a life coach on, on a regular basis. You know, there are people are just like, you know, I mean, if you think how many people in this country are on antidepressants or on anti anxiety medicine, mm. when I moved from yeah. the UK to the US. I ask people, you know, are you on any, any medication? Because I need to know this. I need to be on the lookout for signs that I'm dealing with something that may be struggling with severe depression, in which case they're not suitable for coaching. 
it probably went from like 15 percent in the uk to 80 percent in the us of clients were on some form of medication not necessarily anti you know maybe statins or, or whatever you know and, and it's just that that part of it is, is quite frightening to me so I don't know where I was, mm-hmm. go- I was going with this, really, other than to basically <laughs> agree with. Well, what the, the simplicity, to. the sim- yeah, you know, the simplicity of Henry David Thoreau, and that's what he was all about. In fact, one of one of my favorite lines is "Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity." Yeah. If he's so into simplicity, I'm not sure why he needed to repeat it a couple of times, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I hope you thought and, of that, and you haven't stolen that from a review or something because that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and so he lived in this very small cabin on a lake called Walden Pond. And I've been to the reconstruction of that cabin. I've been to Walden Pond um, a couple of years ago. And it's tiny. No self-respecting American would live in that place Mm -hmm. willingly Mm -hmm. because it's just too small for our egos. It's (laughs) too small for us to to put on display that we actually live in this tiny little place in the heat with wood. You know, it was the whole project, the whole experiment was made quite a bit easier for Thoreau because... He he did have the Emersons right up the road, so whenever he got hungry, he just took a little walk up the road and had dinner at the Emersons. <laughs> so so that's cheating. a little easier than most of it have. Yeah, yeah. But it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful poem, basically, to simple living. And and Thoreau did things like he would get up in the morning and he would stare at Walden Pond when the sun came up until the sun went down. And and claim and proclaim that that was a perfectly valid use of a person's time, and I couldn't agree more. That's cool. But try to find that you know you do that today in this country, and people think that you're living on the dole. Yeah, you'd that, that you're that you've lost your worth ethic. <laughs> you'd be bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I love the I love the Christian right. I mean, because to me, you know, um, I mean, I, I don't want to bash the Christian right because I bash it in every podcast up to now. So <laughs> Olivier is sick of it. But it's like, oh, you know, holy holy fuck! I mean, if Jesus Christ came back today, they'd crucify him all over again. You know, but the people that crucify him are the people that support him, probably. You know, what? Right. It's, you know, it's this like because because he, he really will be saying, you know, I really think we need to invade Iraq. And then I really think we need to give the ba- the bankers a bit of a break. And those big companies shouldn't be paying taxes. That's for sure. It will, it will be, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. I think you lost the 10 clients right now, Tim. So you should stop, yeah. you know. I'm getting rich but, from this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good luck with yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Both our listeners. Yeah. My t- well, two listeners. <laughs> By the, by the way, guy, are you still uh, you you still living off grid yourself? No, are you still living in your uh, off grid house? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm living in a straw bale house, a straw bale duplex. My wife and I share with another couple and their young son, and and it's off grid, a 3.15 kilowatt photovoltaic solar system, and we have two solar pumps and a hand pump and. You know, the ability to grow a tremendous amount of our food, an extensive orchard, and blah, 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 all that. So so I, I, I sort of adopted the simple life of Henry David Thoreau. Um, would you recommend it, but now that you know it? I would recommend doing it if that's what people love to do, if that's what somebody seriously wants to do. Uh, otherwise, no. Um, and, and it was a mistake for me. Um in that uh, for the last five and a half years, I could have been doing what I was really good at and what I love to do, and that's teaching university students or, in the end, teaching honor students and inmates because I was actually banned from teaching in my home department. So, you, you know, I could still be doing those things I love instead of, you know, currently the only way I get to to teach is by going on the road and and telling people they're going to die soon. (laughs) And and I really enjoyed what I was doing before. (laughs) Is it it the title of your posters, you're going to die soon? I'm sure you have quite an audience every time that you go. That, no, that, that's a, that's a, that sounds to me like a Fox News headline, actually. But <laughs> let, let, um, if, I'm, if I may, Olivier, um, I don't want to know where, because you're off-grid, and I don't want Scott Johnson um, st- um, sort of um, tracking you down. But what state are you in? I, li- I live in southern New Mexico. 
Okay. Um, and it, and it's it's actually um, it's pretty easy here in the in the in the first quote energy crisis in the early 1970s, New Mexico, um, with its relatively small human population and its long history of um, what they call libertarianism. Um, it, it the, the state almost immediately made it reasonably okay to adopt alternative housing designs. So within a mile of where I live now, there's this straw bale house, there's another straw bale house or two, there's a, a, a hybrid adobe straw bale, there's double, double brick adobe, there's a rock house, there's papercrete, and there's rammed earth. That, that's all within a mile of here, and there are only... I bet there's only 20, 25 people living within a mile of here. And so there are all those unusual kinds of of house designs. And that's that's kind of cool, actually, that that New Mexico, being a poor, poorly populated state, um, sort of, for one thing, doesn't have the money to pay attention to what people are doing. And for another, in the wake of, of the early 70s energy crisis, encouraged people to start doing things that made a little more sense, like passive solar heating. And that sort of thing. Uh, the, the, I, heard, I read once there was an ice house, but it didn't last past April. But uh, I could have been wrong on that one. <laughs> the guy never really... He just thought, well, the world's going to come to an end in the next couple of months. I don't need to think about the summer when it warms up a bit. And, uh, he, he drowned, sadly. So uh, that's a shame. <laughs> okay. that, was in, that was in Walden, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't Thoreau write about that? Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I think he probably was actually. Now you mention it, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I think we're go- coming to the hour, and I think uh, Tim is not that depressed anymore. I think you're you're happy to live now. I can see that you're you you won't drink yourself off, but you will be loving and compassionate with your with humanity. I think. Yeah. No? yeah. While drink. Just <laughs> while well, yeah, while drinking, I'm a happy. <laughs> I'm a happy. I am actually a very happy drunk. I want to hug people which is slightly unfortunate in some bars that I used to go to in the UK or pubs. It's the kind of thing that used to get you punched or kicked in the bollocks, but anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> Guy, just just as a last word, you know, just... Um, I know that you said it again, you know, for the people, but what, what, what would be this message, you know, this last message that you would say to them again? The... The the tagline, the image I have at at guymcpherson.com, um, the the website is called Nature Bats Last, and the tagline is Our days are numbered. Passionately pursue a life of excellence, and that's what I'm trying to encourage people to do. Our days are numbered regardless of how many we have, and that's always been the case. We don't have forever, and. What most people do around me, anyway, what most of the people I see doing um, involves chasing money and planning for a forever future. Mm. Yeah. And instead of instead of pursuing what they love right now, in pers- instead of pursuing what they would consider the best possible life, they think they need to make money and in twenty years start planning for that day and and i'm just encouraging people to live with a sense of urgency sort of adopting the message from the buddha what 2600 years ago the trouble is you think there's time ah that, but that's, <laughs> a fa- that's a fake buddha quote he never said that seriously so, so sorry to <laughs> down on that you may want to edit that out guy but that's not the buddha never said that um, so who's <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a, it's just a, like a you know the, the most Buddha quotes out there are, are fake. It's a bit like the uh, the whole um, oh, what's it called? There is no way to happiness. Happiness is a way. That's not a Buddha quote either. S- sorry, but I I, I stood, so stood so it's it's like uh, but, but Yogi right, Berra. He didn't <laughs> Yogi he didn't Bear. say any of them things he yeah, said. <laughs> Yogi, Yogi Berra, yeah, he didn't say. Uh, do you do you want this pizza put it, cooked into into eight slices? And he said no, cut it into six. I couldn't possibly eat eight. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's much more power in it to say that this quote is from the Yogi Bear than from the Buddha. I think you're no, right. No, yo, he's talking about Yogi Bear. He's a, he was a baseball player, mate. So, so oh, for fuck, fuck. I know. We've got to leave that in. Yeah, Yogi Bear. 
<laughs> you know, hey, and this is and awesome. Yeah. You know, you know what? What I think, I think that guy is 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 a better life coach than you, to be honest. You I know, think he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? Seriously, this is the first podcast we've done that I'm actually only. Oh, that's my. Did, did did that come across? That's my wife trying to call me. She texted me before. Yeah. Um, there's a little there's a little buzz there yeah um I, this Let's is the first it. podcast we've done that i'm actually going to put on my website the, all the other ones i'm ashamed of <laughs> but, <laughs> but guy actually made some sense on this one and and i didn't hog it all uh, i well for, for for me and i'll let i'll let olivier wrap it up guy i have really enjoyed talking to you it's been a blast um i, I like that you you know you don't mind having a dig you don't like mind being challenged a lot of people you know, I'm not going to say they're all on the right, but they're all on the right. You know, a lot of people don't like having an opinion challenged, and and that's great for us that we can do that. So, uh, from from my perspective, thank you very much for coming on. I've really appreciated it. Well, well, thank you, thank you both, and and they are all from the right because there's no left left uh-huh. in this country. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's you. You're on your own. You're on your own, pal. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Olivier wrap things up. No, really, thank you, Guy, for this. Actually, I was really surprised. I was expecting that you just say, "Who, are, who the hell are you?" And I won't participate to this podcast. But really, I, you know, you just, you just immediately replied to, to, to the, to, in, to the invite, and I knew that you, we would be a good fit because you have humor, and you have humor, I don't. And, and, and that's to me, it's the most important thing to of all. Despite everything, and I've seen some of your presentation, you use humor a lot, and that tells a lot about a man. So, thank you for being there. And I let you. Well, I let you finish. I, I appreciate the opportunity to come on the show. The, um, you, you were surprised that I that I came on the show. I, I don't think you realize how narcissistic I am. <laughs> I love the shit. I love the shit. Oh, yeah. Talk in any venue. Yeah, we should get we should get together. Except we just. Be I think that you you have both too much ego right now. <laughs> both of you have too much ego. Oh, fuck now. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So, oh, thank you, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Yeah. Thank I will. I will stop the recording right now. Deck. And I will send you whatever I whatever I have. Shit! I hope that you have something, guy. <laughs> yeah, I know I have the last thirty-two minutes and thirty-one seconds. I don't know what the hell happened before then, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> Are you, are I apologize you, in advance for my ineptitude. Are you willing to do another one if you have nothing? <laughs> of course. Okay, fine. So I'm we'll do exactly the same thing in the exact same order with exactly the same jokes and it will be rehearsed. Yes. The thing no is, worries. when I try and rehearse anything, I just, I'd be like, and what about, <laughs> you know, I, I'm terrible. I won't even, for interviews that I do myself, I won't even look at the questions because if I do, I sound so stilted and awful yeah. and what have you. No, that's true, and, uh, that's true. If you hear about the death of a of a of a nurse in in Central Florida to, in the news, that'll be my wife because I told her I was on the podcast. <laughs> I said, "Don't call me." First of all, she texts me, then she calls me. I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready to die, bitch. Uh, <laughs> oh, I would I wouldn't kill her. I'd just probably just maim her or something like that. So, <laughs> okay, guy. I think you can. Yes. Uh, of, of, you, you, now you won't come to a second one to be reinvited that I wanted to do, but that's fine. Anyway, have right. have a nice have a nice day. Have a nice day, both. And uh, and uh, yeah, send me everything. And by the way, I will send you a small email to your guy as well with small requests for pictures and things like that. Anyway. Okay. Great. Oh, okay. No problem. Thank, thank, thank you. you.